Welcome to this episode of the Star Wars Universe Podcasts. We love lists in podcast land, and so today, so today, myself and Paul Hoppy will be asking each other questions of what are your top three or bottom three or whatever it is about Star Wars. Now, in the past, we've done this where we both gave each other lists and we knew what the questions were going to be and we had time to write them out. This time, it's going to be off the cuff. I don't know what Paul's going to ask me. Paul doesn't know what I'm going to ask them. So we're just going to play it by ear and see how it goes. And I promise you this was a well thought out, well planned episode that had nothing to do with the fact that Sarah had to cancel at the last minute and so we couldn't do the Rebels episode that we were planning. Nope, this was our plan all along. All that and more after a commercial break, we have no control over it. Welcome back. I'm Matthew, your host. I'm joined as fairly usually by the um, podcast guest du jour, um, Mr. Paul Hoppy. Paul, how are we doing today? We are doing pretty well. We're indoors where it is 70 something degrees, whereas outdoors it is 110 something degrees. Okay. So, yeah. I, I would invite you to the great frozen north, but that would involve you dealing with people. So, yeah. probably not. Yeah. But... <laughs> Traveling distance and. Seeing folks and yeah. Once we get teleporters yeah. set up, we'll make that happen. The Jedi needs not these things. So so let's dive into this. And let me just kind of ask you as a start, and it, it may be that we're about to tear apart the whole premise of the episode, but what is your general feeling on like coming up with lists of like, you know, top five this or top three this or top 14 things about the Clone Wars you never knew? Number seven is sure to make you mad. Yeah. So, you know, the last thing, uh, obvious <laughs> clickbait titles are, you know, obvious clickbait and, mm -hmm. you know, unpleasant. I think, you know, the, my biggest pet peeve is such and such that you don't know. I'm like, just, just stop. Yeah. Just stop. Um, in terms of lists, I enjoy lists. I think lists are fun. I think if you phrase a list, you know, 10 of the greatest, mm -hmm. cool, you know. If you title your list The Ten Greatest, no, you're yeah. wrong because there's just – that's not – a th you know, it's like whether it's subjective or something that's like you're using some theoretically objective measure, it's just like um, I think being like these are three of my favorite right. blank. Right. As yeah. opposed to these are my three favorite. It's like you don't you don't have to rank everything. It's like mm -hmm. just give me give me a list of things that you really enjoy, really don't enjoy, think are really good in this way. Cool. You yeah. know, just like you don't have to be so superlative of it. And that's kind of like why it. I like this idea of doing it, because I think you're right that some preparation can help. And I think we both did this, but I certainly prepared my top three for each of the questions I'm going to ask you. But I also think that, yeah, like. If I sit and take hours and hours to figure out my top 10 favorite of something, I'm still probably going to be like, I, I'm just at some point going to stop. I'm never going to actually know my true top 10 because it's going to change so much moment to moment. But this way, it's like, okay, what's the first three that really strongly come to mind for you? You know, or something like yeah. that, which yeah. is a little less objective, more just like, because more than anything, it's just a fun way to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. So with that, let me ask you my first question. And this is kind of like, it's going back to one of our favorite themes, uh, certainly my favorite. I think one that you've expressed a lot of interest in as well in both the podcasts we do together. Who are your three, who are your top, no, here, here's the way to ask it. <laughs> who is your second, third, and fourth favorite villains? Because oh, I know right, the number yeah. one is Darth Vader. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't have to tell me two, three, four, but who, who are your top three villains not named Darth Vader in Star Wars? Yeah, it's tough because like I think about Star Wars and I think... It has, like, ar arguably the greatest villain of all time. Certainly mm -hmm. one of them. Certainly, you know, one of the most iconic with, I think, the most iconic voice of any character. I mean, I wouldn't put Hux quite that high, but yeah, he's close. Yeah, yeah. Who? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. I, I know who you mean. But uh, I think, unless you said mm -hmm. Hut. Um, yeah, it's, it's weird. I... I can't think of like a clear number two, mm -hmm. you know, I could think of ones that I like. Um, I enjoy Moff Gideon, right, yeah. from uh, The Mandalorian. I think most of that is just uh, Giancarlo Esposito, Yeah, you know, because he's just so good. 
Um, and I, I think a lot of that's the performance more than like mm-hmm. the character's motivations. I'm like, eh, on the character's motivations. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have a clear number two. I, it's, it's Thrawn, right? Yeah. Like in terms of villains in Star Wars who are clearly villains, I think he, after Vader, is the one who kind of has the most, the best blend of, um, you know, comprehensible motivation and complexity and like presence to me a great villain for for me to really love a villain they usually need some level of presence where they can just especially on screen villains right like where when they're on screen there is this this like weight they they like you know Mm -hmm. they fill up the room so and thrawn i really only know from the rebels tv show um i know there's all the novels Mm -hmm. and everything but i I haven't read those but i do see what people see in thrawn you know Yeah, like uh-huh. I think it's really interesting that you name him because Thrawn is also on my list. But I think a lot of fans would say, I somewhat disagree with this, but a lot of fans would say that like of the various different versions we got, like on screen Thrawn is great, but he's even better in the books. So like sure. I think it's awesome right. that just from the just from the on screen you still put him that high because I, I I do as well. Yeah, yeah, like it, it just it comes through, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I'm thinking back and the the earlier, um, you know. If we think through, like, so, like, the Emperor is, like, not my favorite villain, you know? The Emperor, to me, just is there as a plot device in a way that makes every, is, like, so just binarily evil, right? Yeah. The most mustache twirly of mustache twirlers. Right. And that he he lets everybody else be oriented around him in some Mm -hmm. way, right? And lets the rest of the story just function really well. So I think he functions really well as a villain, but isn't like particularly interesting or compelling. And and that's one of the funny things because I was thinking I, I would never put Emperor, the Emperor, on this list. But going by the books, and to some extent, to some extent the Clone Wars TV show, but mostly just going by the books. I would probably put Sheev Palpatine on this list and certainly like oh, Senator okay. Palpatine like and Darth Sidious. Like the way his character has been fleshed out in the books makes him so much more interesting because you get backstory. You get all the things that they would never give him in the 70s and 80s. Like you get backstory, you get motivation, you get all the little ways that his plans were working or not working. Um, but yeah, I just I, – I thought about putting him on the list but was like – but still, he, he, the main way we know him is the Emperor and the Emperor is just – He's good in the first three movies as, like you said, the thing everyone already rents himself. And then he comes back and gets punked. And that's just I, – I hated the whole resurrection thing. So Oh, yeah. I, I don't I, – I, I didn't mind it, but it, it didn't really do a lot for me. You yeah. know? Um, I – like I certainly wouldn't put Kylo Ren on my list of like mm-hmm. top villains. You know? Um, I – you know, we talked about Dooku, and I feel like Dooku, th- the understanding I have of Dooku from what what you and, and Jonah mm-hmm. right, were, were telling me, I think is a very interesting character. Yeah. In terms of the character that I saw on screen, I wouldn't, wouldn't put him there. I would say, um, actually, Maul, I think, is one of the villains with the most, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> most interesting character lines. Because mm-hmm. you can't really call it an arc, you know? <laughs> it, it's a it's zigzag. Like, it's very much a, like... <laughs> it's like, I mean, Maul is kind of, it's sort of the more you change, the more you stay the same, you know? Right. And so, um, you know, and then also he's just got some like great duels, you know? Yeah. Like how much does that factor into, you know, a, you know, I, I one of my questions might, mm-hmm. you know, come into this, but like how much, how much of, how much, uh, you know, what a how you rank a villain is like the moments they're involved in and yeah. that they cause. Right. Definitely. Um, and then, so what, what have I got? I've got Thrawn, I've got Maul and. Moff Gideon, y- unless you want to come up with something better. Yeah, no, I, I think I wouldn't use Gideon. I mean, I think that performance is one of my favorite, you know, is yeah. a top tier performance, but um, I might even go with like agent Callus mm-hmm. in, yeah. in rebels. You know I mean? I think rebels does really well with having, um, villains, antagonists who do feel compelling, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. like I wouldn't put Hondo on this list because I don't think Hondo is like a straight up villain. You yeah, know? to me, I mean, I he's a lovable scamp. He he's an antagonist yeah. Yeah. at times, at times, but yeah, he's very much not a villain. Yeah, and so you know, Callus, I feel a little conflicted, but like 
I'll 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 throw him I'll throw him on there. I, I think is I would say to people who are listening along with us for our coverage of Rebels and have not watched ahead of this podcast, uh, spoil major spoiler warnings. So maybe skip ahead like sixty seconds. But yeah, I I came very close to putting Callus on the list. But what I love about him is he has such a good redemption arc. And right, so I'm yeah. wondering. Like, I wasn't going to mention that. I was kind of just like implying it. But yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. End spoiler section. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a good list. And one thing I think is interesting, and, and this is true about my list as well, is that my list, uh, I, neither one of our lists really draw. We, we obviously were taking Vader from the original three movies, and Grand Moff Tarkin was a very close second for me in those three mm, movies. Okay. But other than that, I, th- I mean, I think one of the things about both the prequels and the sequels is they don't really have any truly great villain characters. Mm. Um, Kylo Ren, somewhat yes, but again, he's also more of a like antagonist who's played as a villain but you know from the very beginning that clearly he's gonna have some kind of redemption or something is gonna happen you certainly Um, suspect it might be true i mean no nobody knew yeah nobody knew because nobody knew because it wasn't written because there was no plan for that quote-unquote trilogy but like yeah it definitely felt that way as much as like that's very similar to vader's arc right except you've seen it before so you see it coming yeah exactly so I, I had him as my top three. Uh, Thrawn was one of them, definitely. Uh, the second, and this might be recency bias because I just watched Rogue One again two nights ago, director Krennic. And in part, mm, it's because okay. I do think he's very menacing in a way. But what I love about him is he's not a Vader or a Tarkin. He's a middle management bureaucrat. <laughs> right. Like, so much of his story, like, I, I love the kind of big picture stuff. And I think with that movie... And Bad Batch also really explores this, but it's like when you have an empire and an empire where if you mess up, you're going to get killed, like employee loyalty to each other is zero and mm. like middle, like bureaucratic infighting is going to be all over the place. And that's exactly what that movie is about, you know, in, in terms of like the, the battle between Tarkin and Krennic. And so I just... It's not even as much his character as just what he represents and what he shows, but I just right. the idea of this guy who like I don't know if he believes in the empire, I don't know if he cares about the emperor, but he wants to have his control of you know he built this thing and he wants to get credit for this thing, and he gets mad when Tarkin and he'll he'll do what he needs to to get credit for that thing, and yeah, I just, I just thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I think um, you know in order to have an evil emperor. And in order to have an evil empire, you need a lot more than an evil emperor, right? Right. You need a lot of people to go along with it, whether they're true believers or whether they're just trying to – they're out for themselves, right? Yeah. Um, but they need to be willing to say, yeah, okay, I'll do this horrible, unspeakable thing in order to like, you know, have a, a nicer speeder yeah. or whatever. And, and to be clear, like he's, he's an awful human being he he watches the destruction of Jeddah and says that's so beautiful um you know but yeah it's it's yeah yeah no he's not a good guy i I think most of the most of the time we get villains who are true believers and so it's just nice to see the bureaucrat uh and then my my last villain is asajj ventress um oh not not even while she's with dooku but just her arc afterwards where she often still is a villain and and particularly the books make this clear. She she sometimes teams up with our people. She sometimes doesn't. And sometimes she's just doing her own thing. Mm-hmm. Like, and they give her this room to be in this middle space where she wants to kill Dooku. She wants to do other things that, like, we would say are overall good. But she doesn't want to help the Jedi. She doesn't want to become a Jedi, definitely. She doesn't want to give up her dark side powers. She still respects parts of the dark side. In the book, she comes to more of a redemption, but I just the way they keep her in this kind of middle ground of antagonist who is dark side, who is not Sith, and who's very morally gray is just one of my favorite kind of characters. Yeah, I, I, I almost she's almost in that category of I wouldn't necessarily classify her as a villain, even though she clearly mm-hmm. is a dark side force user who begins as a clear antagonist. Yeah, um, I feel like. She becomes interesting once she's no longer Dooku's apprentice. You right. know, um, up until then, it's like you know she looks cool. She's got two right, red lightsabers. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. fun. You know, yeah. But like once once uh, he betrays her, then I think she has such a character arc that feels to me, you know, the the force side of scum and villainy almost. You know, yeah. just the kind yeah. of like outcasts, like 
you know, willing to do not really great things, but like not for like evil, you know, yeah. just like, you know, she's just doing I mean, you I, know, what? I like I don't mean this in a in a in a gender way, but like I like non-binary characters. I like characters sure, that yeah. look look at the binary of Jedi Sith good evil and like eh, let, let's play with that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh so what's your first question? Um so I've got a list of like eight potential questions. Okay. One of them was favorite villains, so I'll delete that. I figured I would come up with at least enough that if um, all of yours were on my list, then I'd still have enough extras. Quick editorial comment. I said to Paul that we should probably come up with five questions because I want to make sure we had enough to fill the time. Paul suggested perhaps we only do three. We now we agreed on three, so we have six total. We've only done one of six, and we're 20 minutes in. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get to as many as we can. <laughs> I don't think we're actually 20 minutes in because we like blabbed a little before we actually started the pod. That's but true. yes, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'm not planning to go through all these. I'm looking at them thinking, OK, well, here's one that um, it plays with like villains a little bit mm-hmm. and it will reference many of the same characters. Um, what are three of your favorite duels? I, I was thinking this is going to be three of your favorite lightsaber battles or something like that. Yeah. Um, Duels. Yeah, Maul's Ma- in a lot of them. Um, okay. And and for me, it's it's always this hard moment of. I enjoy the fight. The I enjoy the like you know sort of visual effect of the fights, but as I said before, I'm not fight scenes aren't the primary thing that motivates me. So, I that matters to me. But what generally matters much more to me is the emotional stakes I feel in this. And and here I think I'll kind of square that circle. I do think that the way the fighting is done, if it's done well, should probably reflect that, you know? And so, um, like, honestly, the first one that comes to mind, even though we just did a podcast episode about how it's not really a duel, it lasts three seconds, is Obi-Wan and Maul. Um, because it just is, to me, and there's a great TikTok that I'll post along with this episode where they really break down, like, how Kenobi goes through these different stances and, like, the mind game the two of them play and that most of the fight happens before they start fighting. Because the fight is like four slashes and then we're done. But there's just so much emotional weight to that fight. There's so much history of these two characters. And it feels like such this perfect coda that like I remembered it as such this epic fight that I was shocked when I saw that it was only like five seconds long. Because in my head it had so much power and I still think it does. Yeah, that's um that's definitely on my list too. So uh-huh. I'll just respond to that briefly. Yeah. Um I think it's very much a duel mm-hmm. in the you know, the way that a gun duel can be a duel. Yeah. Like one person shoots, the other person shoots, it's over. Or maybe just the first person shoots, the other mm-hmm. person's dead. Like yeah. you know, that's basically what happens here, right? Mm-hmm. Maul shoots, Kenobi parries, Kenobi kills Maul. <laughs> Boom, done. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And uh, but the dual part of it is like the part that happens beforehand, right? It's the drama, it's the setup, and I feel like there's there's so much of that. And um, it, yeah, I mean, we we talked about it a bunch on the last pod. Go listen to that mm-hmm. pod if you haven't. If you had, you know, all those thoughts are you know yeah. still fresh. So mind. I don't want all three to be mall. So I'll say like tied for second and third because they're just so both so well no i'm just going to i'm going to give you four answers pick one um <laughs> but I'll, you can mention them both i'll pick here's the thing the the two oh god there's just so many good fights um <laughs> duel of the fates at the end of phantom mm-hmm. menace a i think part why it's, it stands out is that i do think the rest of phantom the rest of phantom menace was very much not a movie for me and that that's fine i i've really enjoyed listening to why people take such great meaning and power from it i just didn't love it that it stands out so much more, but also especially as I've learned so much more about um, Qui-Gon and this whole idea of like really just giving thought to Obi-Wan was just the wrong person to train Anakin. And like he admitted that all the way back in uh, Empire Strikes Back. But the the idea that like Qui- if Qui-Gon had been able to raise Anakin, the whole galaxy would have worked out very so differently. And, and that to an extent... That is the duel of the fates. And then on some level, when Maul kills Qui-Gon, the fight's over. Like, there's still an interesting fight still, and, and Obi-Wan gets to kill Maul. Well, 
he thinks he kills them all, but <laughs> yeah, by, bisecting. bisecting, which doesn't mean killing, oddly enough. Um, but yeah, I think that, so that fight to me is just really impactful. And I'll say though, here's my, I hate previews. As much as I love that battle, if the first time I saw a dual sided lightsaber was in a theater, I think my love for Phantom Menace would be so much higher. Like just mm. that one thing. Because there is so much beauty in and just amazingness and like, oh my god, what the hell are we gonna do when Maul reveals that second blade? And just to have not seen that before and to watch these two people trying to figure out how to fight like I mean, Ray Park was just amazing. Like he yeah. was the stunt coordinator, the the, the sword fight teacher, and they were like the, he was supposed to teach Maul, and they're like, why does he just be Maul? Um right. So yeah, the the visual beauty of it, the music of it, and just the meaning of it. I think that that's that's my number two. Nice, yeah that that's one that was close for me, mm-hmm. uh, but it isn't in you know it's it's somewhere in the top ten for me. Yeah, you know? um, I I feel you on the um, you know the the fate aspect of it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's something that I had never really given that much thought before, but I yeah. think is a really good point. Um, personally, like. The music is amazing. Yeah, it really and is. it it carries a lot of things, and you know, throughout Star Wars, the music, mm-hmm. and so there it really elevates that to another level. Uh, that was also the first like really acrobatic lightsaber battle yeah. I think that you had right, like mm-hmm. through the original three movies, like you know they kind of gradually ramped up from. Yeah. You know, really not super impressive to like, okay, you know, oh, he did a sidekick. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good form. All right. Mm-hmm. You know, um, where that those battles were much more about the the uh, the emotion, I think. Whereas here, there was, you know, there was emotion, right? But there was right. also this, like, real, the choreography was another level. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I have about I think that. it's really true. And, you know, this is when, like, we go from lightsaber equals claymore to lightsaber equals rapier. And that's just a lot more fun of a fight to watch. Yeah, or, I, or equals bow staff, like, I which will... I did not see till the theater. And it was quite, I had oh, okay. sat through the rest of the movie, which I was like, eh, eh. And I was like, all right, all right, this is this is why I'm in this theater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, this is, this is a moment, you know. That, that's impressive that you were avoiding previews all the way back then that well. Because, yeah, I definitely saw I it. Didn't, on like yeah. eight, I saw it on eight different TV show TV. Ads yeah, I didn't watch TV. Yeah, so that helped. That's smart. That's smart. Um, on well, even though I know it does not look great, honorable mention to me for the Obi Wan versus Vader fight in the first movie in A New Hope. Mm-hmm. Honorable mention to me for um, Ahsoka versus Maul at the end of Clone Wars. I, I think it probably shouldn't be in my top three because again, it's mostly I've just talked about it so much. I want to talk about something else. Uh, honorable mention for. Um, the uh, when Ahsoka and Obi Wan fight together against uh dark side people, because it's just like they're kind of like bantering and they're both making fun of how like they mm. they can't imagine they're doing this and like they're kind yeah, of yeah in Clone Wars yeah in Clone Wars yeah. yeah um but the one I'm gonna come with for my for my top three and again here this is emotion over acrobaticness but is Return of the Jedi uh Vader and Luke because there's just t- the real duel there is. Vader trying to pull Luke to the dark side and Luke trying to pull Vader to the light side. And the lightsabers are are just a prop in that larger duel. And mm, yeah. to me, that whole duel and that whole scene is the heart and soul of everything I love about Star Wars is the idea that like, yes, like you can't – Vader can needle Luke and can get under his skin and it, Luke can lose it for a minute and it, when, when, when Leia is threatened but can still pull back enough – to find the compassion in in Vader and to pull him back to the other side. And and it's also just like, it's fun to watch a fight where one person's trying not to fight, you know, that it just creates a different kind of dynamic. And I think they shot it really well. Yeah. That's my number one that I'm not going to count as number one, because I want to talk about other ones besides that. And Empire Strikes Back, which are my number one and two, because to me, you know, Star Wars ultimately comes down to the, like the Luke Vader thing. You know, yeah. Anakin, <laughs> the three of them <laughs> and sort of how they interact to me is like the heart of the original Star Wars, which is the Star Wars I lived with until the Phantom Menace, basically. Right. So I, um, I will just quick yeah. interject. I was going to ask you, what are your top three Star Wars movies? And then realized it would just be the original trilogy. I'm 90 percent sure. So uh, Rogue One, I think, is ahead of Star Wars. Okay. A New Hope. That's fair. 
but like those two are close and I I was going to if that was a question, I was going to go with the trilogy as one unit that's and fair. then <laughs> so yeah. Um but no, that's a good that's a good a good guess. It's pretty yeah. close. It's you know, it's like th- that's one, two, and like tied for third, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um yeah, the like the lighting and the music, I think that's the not the first time you have vocals, right? Because the that when the emperor shows up, you have some mm-hmm. human voices in the music, right? But um that's the first time you do in like a big in like a fight scene, which then I think they did again in Duel of the Fates, right? But like mm-hmm. the lighting, the the music, like the production, the sound, it like it all comes together so well to really underscore <laughs> underscore um, the emotions of the fight, right? Which yeah. are the key to the fight. And, and it's cut up across so like it's broken up rhythmically by the other two battles that are going on. Right. Right. And it it's really interwoven with those so well. And the fact that Luke doesn't want to, really fight right that's not really what he's there to do um it it does change the dynamic and you know that he does get so emotional that he screams something that's either no never or not her and you can't really tell and Mm -hmm. i guess it's subtitled but like it's yeah that that is just like to me that's that that, i think that's my favorite star wars moment because that's like or a second you know but that whole time in that movie yeah you know um and then empire strikes back to me also is this you know, that's their first duel and mm-hmm. they do want to fight, but like Vader doesn't really want to fight then. You yeah, know, Vader right. wants to capture parallel. him. I hadn't thought of that. Right? Yeah. He's not trying to kill Luke. He's trying to bring him to the dark side. And in the second one, Luke's trying to bring him back from the dark side, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I like that Luke loses that first one and then he wins the second one in like the same way, you know, right. cutting off the lightsaber hand. And, and um, I think those two duels just really, also the lighting and just the way they're shot is, is yeah. so... Uh, perfect in in those two movies and to me it's like without those i would just like star wars you know yeah, i think it's, it's like true. that's that's what elevates those movies to like movies that i really love um but those two don't count because they're they're like okay. the vader you know of the villains question let me just say two quick things about them and then get you to your actual answer yeah go ahead go um ahead. one is i think also one thing you said about how that lightsaber battle is intercut with the two other battles that are happening Mm-hmm. One on the surface of Endor, one the space battle, mm-hmm. and all three battles are interesting. And all mm-hmm. three ba- and the rhythm of the battles matches each other. Yeah. To me, the f- the, f- the 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 most damning thing about like the way for if if oh. Phantom Menace had done that, right? I think I would have had a much better opinion of the movie. Again, it's the fact that it's cutting between this utterly ridiculous spar- starship battle where right. a kid is just floating around and yeah, no one knows yeah, how yeah. to shoot against him and this ridiculous battle of gungans versus droids that are both so boring and so badly cut that it's just so different yeah and a fourth thing too it's got like amidala and them like all sneaking around and stuff it's like cutting back and forth oh, yeah. between four things because each movie like a new hope was like one thing and then mm-hmm. Empire was two things, and Jedi yep. was three things, and then a Phantom Menace was four things. And then I think finally they got to Attack of the Clones. They're like, "All right, let's not cut between five things." Yeah, that's that that that's much better. Um, the other thing I was gonna say to also about that Jedi fight scene is, like, again, this is the stuff that I notice more than like the martial arts stuff. There's particular shots that are just that that tell so much. And to me, the the, the defining one. There's a couple like this, but the defining one is. When Luke finally, like, takes the bait and attacks and, and and he swings at the Emperor, it looks like, and Vader blocks him. And it's just this perfectly sh- – I, I, I can exactly visualize in my head yeah, yeah, of their too. two lightsabers crossed with the Emperor laughing in the background. And it's like yeah. that moment tells you everything about the Emperor's motivation for that entire movie. Like, yeah. he wants these two to fight. Because I honestly believe in that moment he doesn't care who wins. Like, he cares. Right. Yeah, but in yeah, terms yeah. of, like – he wants the. He doesn't know which of these two is best. And he, he wants whoever's stronger, and yeah. that's the one who's going to win. Yeah. Which, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, again, goes to the bureaucrat thing. Like, get your bureaucrats to fight against each other, and the best will arise. Right, um, right. These two aren't bureaucrats, I, but you know. What I, I mean? will <laughs> say one thing about that scene. That shot is so great. Except, I feel like Luke is swinging from the wrong side. 
That may well be true. <laughs> it feels well like true. he's swinging away from the emperor. And I'm like, I don't understand. If he was swinging at the emperor, he should have been coming this way, but he's coming the other way. It, it, that always has bothered me because I'm like, this is so good. But it's also like, I, I think it's wrong. I think it's shot wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's funny. I, I just a couple hours ago recorded some uh, episodes with the Marvel Movie Minute folks. A, a, a great podcast. I love it. And I was teasing. I, I went pretty deep into like having fun with those guys. And I was teasing them about how they really look for the minutia in movies. And yeah, yeah, yeah. it's stuff that I used to not notice, but now yeah. I do. And so, like, God, don't point that out to me. I don't want to yeah, think about Yeah, they're my that. people. <laughs> yeah, they really are. They really are. All right. So what are your actual top three? Okay. My top three that aren't disqualified from being too awesome and seminal and just, like, uh-huh. you know, at the root of, like, uh, you know, my initial love for Star Wars are... Um, Oh, so you already mentioned Maul vs. Kenobi, which mm-hmm. is just, we've said everything that needs to be said about that. It's yeah. amazing. Um, it's not about the, yeah, that's it, period. Um, Maul vs. Ahsoka, I'm going to take that one because mm-hmm. I know that was choreographed and shot with two actual people. It was Ray Park and I think it's Lauren Mary Kim. I might be messing up her name, but I think that's her name, um, who is a outstanding stunt woman who... Um, she was she was doing Ahsoka, right? Right. And then the funny thing is, she is the stunt double for the um, the governor. I think she's called in um, uh, in the Mandalorian in the oh, episode the Jedi. Who when she's fighting against Ahsoka, which I oh, thought was oh, kind that's of funny. hilarious. That's I, awesome. I'm pretty sure this is true. I, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Um, so anyway, I thought that was that fight is so interesting because it's like this really great well done duel and like you know like it doesn't really matter yeah. because you know what's going on is the like at the same time is the whole you know anakin fall thing right. right and so it's like it matters but it also feels like you know getting to see this epic duel between these two characters who know like they know they're the side characters you know right. which you don't always get but they know that like the fate of the galaxy is at stake and they're just here out on a scaffolding like you know yeah. dueling and um i have to say in particular i'm trying not to have as many tangents cuz we're going so long but i this yeah. one i have I, i'm going to have all the tangents we know us yeah, um i love that particularly as you mentioned that that ray park is a part of that because ray park is an amazing martial artist and and fight coordinator and all that kind of stuff I don't think there's anything about his like f- acting, especially his line line delivery in a Phantom Menace that's really that yeah. noteworthy. And I think because of that, and in part because of the character gets much better writing, at this point when most people think of the actor who plays Darth Maul, they could think of Sam Witwer, who's the voice actor who I think plays him phenomenally in the Clone Wars. And on some level, it's like a little sad that like, wait, no, Ray Park originated this character, and now Sam Witwer has just taken it so much further. So to have Ray Park be back and involved was such a critical moment for this character. I I just I just love that. To me, like I think they got him in part because he's very good, but it also to me is just a really nice way of honoring like these two people who together really gave life to this character so well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The 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 circle is now complete and all that. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, I, I yeah I think that's great because like what Ray Park brought to the character was the physicality, right? Yeah. And so having that in um. Having him bring that to that episode, which is, you know, that four arc episode of of Clone Wars is just, I don't know. It's tied for, like, top in my, yeah. you know, Star Wars things, basically. Got it. Oh, so is that your three? No, I just listed one. Okay. Oh, two. I listed two? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So Maul versus Ahsoka, Maul versus Kenobi, right? Mm-hmm. And then I already had two Vader versus. So, like, clearly my villains are fairly... Mm-hmm. weighted towards you know with with the, their duels um and i specifically said duels not lightsaber battles because my third one and well it involves a lightsaber is um uh din Djarin, the mandalorian versus moff gideon with oh, the spear yeah. the beskar spear versus the dark saber which um it like that that kick thing flip, the thing he does with the like he kicks the spear and it comes up and uh i just think it's Really well done in an episode that also is tied for like my favorite Star Wars things ever, mm-hmm. and um, and yeah, and I mean, Dark Saber looks awesome, and I think yeah. it's the first time we really see it right in action in live action mm-hmm. in terms of actually in a fight, right? Yeah. 
So yeah, that, that one just, that's like both for like where it sits within that whole episode and that Mm -hmm. whole show. And then also just like, just the choreography, you know, like it's just really, really thoughtfully, um, creatively done you know it's like because i feel like you see things and you see things and so often it's like yeah well i've seen that move before i've said oh what's that you know Mm -hmm. like for for like someone to do something physical and some action thing and like really surprise me like it takes something and then they did it there Uh, i'm just gonna add one more honorable mention just because and then we get to your last (laughs) your next question but because you said duel like i still was thinking this is lightsaber battle but because you said duel the fact that Cad Bane has actual literal duels, like yeah, both yeah. in the book of Boba Fett and in the Clone Wars TV show. Yeah. And like, if you told me that someone wrote a black hat cowboy and put him in Star Wars, I would think you're nuts. But right. Cat, they do it so well with Cad Bane. So anyway. Yeah. And I mean, they have they have that a lot in Mandalorian as well. Right. And yeah. I think some people are like, oh, but they just did this. It's like, yeah, but, you know, it's still good. It's, still, yeah. you know, as long as you have the right characters and you shoot it right, it can, you know, it can be good. Definitely. All right. So what's your next question? OK, my next question. This is kind of overlapping, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with what are three of your favorite live action moments? Because we did our favorite animated moments. Right. Mm hmm. I think okay. that was a thing we did. So, like, in the live action, everything. Like, what are three... And I didn't actually come up with these for myself, so uh, go ahead. <laughs> so, I'm going to be controversial here to start out. Um, I think my favorite moment in all of Star Wars is, um, you know, Projection Luke against Kylo Ren. It is just mm. such an incredible moment of... To me, I, mean, I think it's visually gorgeous, like the whole idea of like the sand and like the fact that like you have to really pay attention enough to notice that like Luke isn't causing that red. He isn't moving the sand the way everybody else is. Um, the dialogue in it is is both like hilarious. Like I don't think I've ever laughed quite as much as when Luke brushes the dust off of his shoulder after like all the things get fired at him and just the whole like everything you just said is wrong. Um, yeah, so that that that's going to be my number one. Um, uh, so I, I'm actually going to respond to that. That go for it. out of all the things that I absolutely loathe about the Last Jedi, that's not one of them. Okay, like that is definitely uh, taken on its own. I think is a great scene. I've I've certainly laughed harder, but mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, it's the the sort of moment when like. Every the dust is clearing, and then just like still standing there, he's like, "Yeah, no, what is that all you got?" Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's fantastic. I think that's one. Uh, number two, I've talked about this to death, so I won't say too much of it. But it's just, um, if I cannot save Anakin, I will avenge him. Vengeance is not the Jedi way. I am no Jedi. Um, I mean, I get goosebumps just saying those lines again. It's from the um, Twilight of the Apprentice, the episodes from Rebels. Uh, Ahsoka's ta- is, when Ahsoka's fighting with Anakin slash Vader. The, the um, famous live action show. Oh, live action. You said live action. Okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry. I thought you were going to, I thought you were referencing Kenobi now, actually. No, so I've got a similar <laughs> question, but in a different way. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. well, yeah, live action. Okay, live action, live action. Um, but I, Hondo has never been in a live action. And uh, yeah, well, so you good. can't use Hondo. We already did animation, yeah. right? Okay, that was well, great. Go listen to that episode. We had a lot of fun. The moment when we talked about, the, like, I think the if we hadn't just done duels, I think the the Luke Vader fight scene would have been one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think when we. This is silly, but it has been attacked, so I have to defend it. Yub nub. <laughs> Yub nub. Oh, um, yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, I'm with and, you. And I, it's not just because it's a silly song, and I like silly songs, and I hate the idea of Lucas cutting it, but, like, you know, one of the fundamental ideas of those movies, uh, at least the original trilogy, was supposed to be, like, the way that machinery is replacing man, and that man can fight back against machinery, and or the sentient life can fight back about machinery. And, like, some people think the Ewoks are silly, I love the idea of these indigenous folks who don't have any technology. Like, I mean, they have their technology and yeah, using yeah. that to defeat this incredible technological menace. And so this, the way that song was done and like the whole, 
like I, I can visualize it entirely in my head. You know the way that they dance with each, each other, and one of them I think it's Wicked dance. No, it's the it's the Medicine Man type person mm. who dances with Han, and like the 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 drum set of um, Imperial Wars. helmets, yeah. which I, I admit as an eight year old I was like, are their heads still in there? That's so <gasps> badass. <laughs> I don't mean thinks that's probably not the case. Um, but maybe. I mean, the Ewoks eat people. That's Let's true. Like, that's true. Right? Like, people are like, oh, they're so cute and fluffy. It's so cheesy. Like, they eat people. <laughs> they were going to eat people. <laughs> that's very true. They're um, hardcore. So I think that would be the second moment. Third would be... It's funny. I mean, all of Rogue One is so good. I... Oh. I, I, I have know. one moment. I, I know what it is. It's also going to be from Last Jedi. It's also going to be very controversial. The Hondo maneuver. Um, I just think the 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 where she you, she takes her ship to light speed to crash into the uh, Imperial Star Destroyer to or the the New Order First Order Star Destroyer to stop that from happening. Um, it's just I don't care about the physics. I don't care about like why didn't they use it before? You can head cannon answers to all those questions. Just the, the pure filmmaking of it, of having all the sound just stop and just that incredible visual moment, as well as like this person who's had everything about her leadership has been questioned up to this point. And it's just such her willing to sacrifice herself like this to like she knows General Organa, Leia would want to sacrifice herself, but she won't. And so she does it instead. It, it's to me just one of like in terms of like just single moment, one of the most perfect in Star Wars. No comment. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just leave that. Um, yeah. So those are your three: two from yeah. Last Jedi, yeah, and one from wait, and one from Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There, there, there's, I mean, as I'm thinking about it more, there's definitely some other like what? Han, Han, oh, yeah, yeah. Han knocking Vader ship out of like Han's, you know. Oh yeah, coming out of nowhere. Yeah, Han's moment in, yeah. in New Hope is definitely up there. Um, and actually I'll, I'll throw one more in because it is, it's double edged because it's such a perfect moment of romance that the whole rest of the series is constantly trying to get back to and failing, but I love you. I know. Um, oh yeah. yeah it's yeah, just such yeah. a defining, beautiful moment. Yeah. I had one category that was going to be favorite lines. Yeah. And I don't know whether that would be there, but it, it certainly, it certainly <laughs> could be, you know, um, yeah, for me, coming up with three moments is, like, hard. Like, I'll I'll also say, like, the entire end of Return of the Jedi. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm just not going to pick anything from that because I could easily just have my top three be, like, you know. I mean, there was the lightsaber battle. And then even after that, there's, like, Luke being, like, because I'm a father, you know, I'm a father like my Jedi before me. That is that is not <laughs> the line. That is definitely not the line. <laughs> you know, and then Vader turn. I mean, Vader turning to the Emperor, to me, is, like. That's the pivotal moment, you know, yeah. the, the fate of the galaxy right there. But like, and I won't he pick says that one. nothing you... when he does it. He says nothing. nothing. <laughs> yeah, that, I have another thing that might <laughs> that might come up again. Um, and then the whole yub nub thing as well. And and like Luke with like the lighting, uh, the, you know, the Vader armor on oh, fire. Oh yeah, you know, that was really nice. It's it's so like that whole thing. I'll just set that aside. Mm -hmm. And like also the parts of Empire Strikes Back that I've already mentioned. Like I'll set that aside as well. Um, and I guess I'll have one sort of cheat, which is the last episode of Mandalorian season, you know, season two, episode eight. Um, oh, I don't think it's a cheat. I think the whole thing is phenomenal. I mean, I think the entire episode is fantastic, but mm -hmm. like the moments that really stand out to me aside from anything I've already mentioned, um, you know, and I mean, there's all the like jetpack parkour and all that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. but like the, um, you know, you know, beep, beep, beep. And they're like, oh, this is, uh, how many life forms? None. You know, like that's like so chilling when it's like, oh, it's the dark troopers. Mm -hmm. And then like, and, you know, I mean, then Luke showing up, uh, spoilers, I guess. I, I often try <laughs> to like not mention that but because it's like it was just so amazing, like watching that right when it came out and having no idea that that was definitely yeah. what was going to happen. You know, and Bo-Katan being like the Jedi, you know, like like there's so much weight there mm -hmm. from like to me it, it brings this feeling of like really how much sort of the galaxy went through like just yeah. Bo-Katan saying that line because of having seen her way back in Clone Wars and knowing you know knowing that she knew Jedi but then that there was 
there were these decades where she didn't, yeah. you know, and then the empire's fallen and now she's here. And like, then her reaction there, it, it's just, it, it's, you know, and Katie Sackhoff does a great job and Ming-Na Wen does a great job, which is none. And like mm-hmm. that whole end there for me is just like, that's outside of like the original trilogy, which I'm just going to disqualify. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say, I'm yeah. not going to mention that, you know, um, is just, it's, it's the, the most of like what Star Wars can be to me. Yeah. I think, I think that makes total sense. It's, it's just. And, and and to me, it's the perfect marriage because it is both an um, incredibly emotional, powerful moment. Like, I had a friend who actually got the Luke reveal, reveal spoiled for them. Mm-hmm. And, like, I think that might be the single moment in all of Star Wars that I would be most upset if it had been spoiled for me. Like, I, I might I go with second, but yeah. I don't remember a time when I didn't know Vader was Luke's father, so I can't really mm, count okay. that. But, sure, her, like... Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I think all of that is just, and it's, yeah, and it's, it's both the emotional meaning of it, but also just the cinematography of it, the, the lighting, the, the slow reveal and the fact that you only really know it's Luke because of his glove, which is this yeah. weird thing of like his connection to his father. It was just like, yeah, there was so much thought and love put into every shot of that scene. Absolutely. Yeah. And like, just like the whole episode, like so, so much of that episode is just, so well executed you know and could yeah. only be executed that way by people who have so much investment in the whole definitely, um definitely. you know oeuvre or whatever <laughs> like you right. know, the, the whole the whole world i'm gonna throw um, one other quick yeah. cheat that it made me think of which is because again this is like a two second moment but the end of the first episode of mandalorian when you don't really know who this care or i think it's maybe the end of the second oh. episode no, it's the end of the first episode. No, end we, of the first, yeah. You don't really know who this character is. The robot wants to kill the baby. Yeah. Mando hasn't really said much about it. And all you hear, you you see him draw his gun, you hear the gun go off, and for a half second, you don't know what happened. Yeah. And then you see the robot fall. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, that is just, that's just brilliant filmmaking. Like, in terms yeah. of, like, shooting and, and effects, and it was just... S- that moment, that moment sets up everything about Mando's character so well. Absolutely, for sure, and the whole show, right? Like the arc of the show. Basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I guess for a second one, I'm gonna go with the moment from Rogue One that I think maybe you were gonna mention. Mm. I'm not sure which one. Um, um, where Donnie Yen's character, I, I don't remember the character's name. Oh, uh, they yeah. say it like three times. I think it starts with a C. Mm-hmm. Um, where he's just walking towards the button and he's just like, I'm one with the force. The force is with me. I'm one with the force. The force is with me. You know, and then he goes and presses the button and gets mm-hmm. shot and, you know, everything, you know, it works. Right. But like, yeah. Um, yeah, I just I just really I don't know, because that was a whole movie that like wasn't about the force. You know, mm-hmm. it was about the rebellion and um, outside of like any connection with any Jedi. And so they're kind of having that character there, like doing that. It just, it just really, um, to me, it kind of brings it together a little bit more in a way. I think so. You know, and it's like, you don't really know whether he's using the force or not, you know, like maybe he is, maybe he's not. It doesn't really matter. You know, it's like, um, I mean, it's funny because it's kind of like, uh, I guess it's like his, his faith in the force and his mm-hmm. conviction and whatever, which which isn't really something that I'd say I can relate to in any right. you know kind of you know real world thing. But um, I ju- I just think it plays really really powerfully there. Yeah, um, I I think that moment sets up a true understanding of how non Jedi like the way they mythologize the Jedi and the Force much better than almost anything in Clone Wars does. You know, I yeah, think it, yeah. it, it it really just drives right. that home. Um, and then also sets up there's something very similar in I believe the penultimate episode of uh Clone Wars. So where mm. Rex is is saying something like that. Or or Ahsoka's either Rex or Ahsoka, or they're both saying it something. You know, they're both saying yeah, something. Yeah, I, like I remember what you're talking about. I can't place yeah. it. Yeah. 
And I, I guess I won't pick a third one because I basically picked all of the end of Return of the Jedi. And, you know, I, I did think it's funny so. that you. I suggested we do five. You said let's do three, so we have to make some decisions. And we've both been cheating like crazy, but that's well, fine. This is all arbitrary. We can do that. Yeah, and that, that's what I said. I mean, I even said in the message, I was like, "Look, we're going to talk about more than what we call mm-hmm. our top three, right? We're going to yeah. say these are three of our favorite, and then here's some other, you know, ones yep. that didn't quite make it mm-hmm. today. Maybe on another day they would. Yep. Okay." I have one more, but why don't you – I mean, yeah. I have five more, but – oh. You say your one more quickly, and then I'll, I'll try to restrain. Yeah. Th- this one is little, okay? okay? This one's kind of like a, a throwaway almost. Um, outside of, like, the, the racism and anything else, like, really problematic from, mm-hmm. like, The Phantom Menace or anywhere else, outside of that, what are to you the three biggest really cringe moments in Ooh. any Star Wars anything? This is a good one, and people who have been listening to me talk about Star Wars for these episodes can probably guess a couple of these. <laughs> um, number one for me is uh, Dooku. Uh, it, it specifically, it's oh, the yeah. moment when yeah. Dooku gets off the ship and you see that he has been working with Palpatine this whole time. Because yeah. I on this, he gives Kenobi this beautiful speech where it's clear he believes that that he's doing this for the right reasons. And and part of the thing is we know that he's right. And Kenobi's wrong. He says, look, there's a Sith behind all these maneuvers and you don't know that. And Kenobi's like, no, we can't know that. And like that would set up Dooku as such this utterly brilliant villain. You've heard me talk about this all the time. I- I'm not gonna say much more about it, but yeah. So to me, that is, that's absolutely cringeworthy. Um, Word. There's so much about Last uh, Rise of Skywalker that's cringeworthy to me that I feel like picking any one moment. I- I'm gonna I'm gonna put the way we were like <laughs> that whole all, movie. <laughs> all of Return of Jedi is good. All that la- that movie's gonna be bad. Uh, not <laughs> all of it, as we're gonna discuss. Right, it, uh, a lot. But like, so what are my other two? Um, I think uh, you respond to that first one while I think of oh. the other two. <laughs> No, I just said word. Like I agree. Yeah. You know, I'm with you on that one. I'll suggest one for you. From the same movie. Okay, go for it. I mean, yeah, there's so It might much. involve Yoda and a oh. lightsaber. Oh, okay. I, th- I would think that. I, mean, I don't know if that's what you would... Uh, that's not necessarily what I mean by cringe moments. But because yeah. you went with the Dooku one, I feel like that from things you've said. Okay, yeah. You know, I, Yoda to me is different. Yeah, because that's not like... I'm, I'm going to focus thing. on cringe in the story, you know? Okay, fair, um, fair. Yes, yeah, Yoda, I think, because yeah. you sort of also said, like, besides, like, the racism and some sexism yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, that's just pure ableism in that scene. Sure. Um, I I feel like I have to give an honorable mention to I Hate Sand. and just Yeah, that's my number three. But I, I would say even perhaps, like, because oh, that's a terrible line. But to me, the more cringeworthy moment, and here, actually, I'll say this one, is um, I can't sleep. I, I can't think. I, I forget the exact wording, but it, it, at some point, it basically comes oh, to... Yeah. I am tormented by the kiss you should never have given me. I am in agony. And I just like, Anakin is a f- boy. Like, forgive huh. me. I'll, I'll bleep this out. Anakin is an F boy. Like, it's just all of like the, the incredibly manipulative, gaslighty, like, you should be with me because I, I am hurting because you reject me. And so it's your fault. He's not, he's not an F boy. He's an incel in that moment. Like, it, it just feels like, I I would say I cannot understand why people romanticize Anakin and Padme as this great romantic couple, but then people romanticize the Joker and Harley. And I think there's right. actually a lot of similarity there. I think there's I think there are some of the same toxic elements. Um and it's it's also shown in the Clone Wars when um, you know, Anakin catches Padme with Clovis. But yeah, I think that would be my second one, is just that whole speech of I am so hurt by the fact that you're rejecting me that you should be with me. Yeah, I um I mean I guess all the Jedi are literally involuntarily celibate, right? Yeah. But um yeah, I I, I don't know. I have some that kind of delves into a whole thing that I kind of don't really want to get into. Okay, that's um, cool. But uh yeah, I mean yeah. you could just say every line in in Attack of the Clones, and it'd be like, yeah, yeah it's, C- certainly, it's just very cringy dialogue. But it, it's the it's part of why I love you. I know it looks so much better. Um, right. Yeah. Third moment. Um, 
Give me your list because I'm having. Tr- give me your list. I'm having trouble coming All up right. my third. My list is number one. No. Number two. Wait, no. Wait, wait. Oh. And number I'll... three. I hate sand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so five words. <laughs> So I guess Vader says no multiple times now in Return of the Jedi, mm-hmm. not my Return of the Jedi, but yeah, that t- just ruins the best. Like that's actually, I believe, my number one moment in all of Star Wars is Vader turning yeah. and chucking the Emperor down the chute, you know, because that is the turning point. That is what the entire original trilogy was building towards. It's the climax. And Lucas was just like, how about I ruin it for you? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like Yub Nub getting stripped away in this just even tighter, more efficient form. Yeah. And it's funny because, like, Han shot first is probably the moment that's the most talked about in terms of stupid things Lucas added or took away. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like maybe it was because by the release of that movie, we were just so used to these terrible things that we didn't focus on it more. But yeah, to mm-hmm. me, that one... Han not shooting first is a dumb moment and it hurts his character development. But yeah, I think that moment is far more important. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. Just the weight of the moment. Yeah. So, so yeah, it, it, that would be my, it, I was thinking like to me they just don't exist. But yeah, if I have a third cringeworthy moment, it's just all of the things from that movie. The, all of the things that Lucas all, later inserts. Right. All the changes that aren't just like, you know, a little bit of CGI that makes Cloud City look like it has yeah. windows. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. You can do that. That's okay. Luke, Luke reconnecting with Biggs, I think is probably my only where I'm like, yeah, that actually adds a little bit to the movie. Right. Yeah. That's just, that's just director's cut. You know, yeah. that's like, that's okay. You can put something back in that you cut for time. You know, mm-hmm. I'm always fine with that. Yeah. Um, and, but I, I just, I still don't understand why Disney doesn't have multiple versions available on D plus, you know? Yeah. Like you could just do that. It's just there, a streaming service. You could you could do that. There is apparently on the internet. I'll see if I can find where it is and, and put a post a link in the screen screenshots. But someone's put in the in the show notes. Someone has put I think on YouTube like the original version that was shown oh. in theaters in the 1970s. Really interesting. So like this is yeah. not only like not with the Lucas editions, but like yeah. this is before the remastered. So like right, right. the TIE fighters are jerking around on the screen and like the explosions look pretty bad. Yeah. And yeah, I, I want to see if I can find that at some point. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. Um, um, so, okay. And, so, oh, go ahead. so then the second no is just like when Vader becomes Vader and you uh. know, he's in the suit for the first time and he's like, no, I'm like, you managed to take, you know, the greatest, like, voice actor of, of live action anyway, mm-hmm. you know, and, like, ha- just, just, just clowning on him. Like, what the, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, in the same movie, you've got that backswing. You know, that whole scene doesn't work for me, but it's not like there's a single moment that's, like, super mm-hmm. cringe. It just doesn't quite work for me, you know? Yeah. Whereas the no is just this, like, you know feces ice cream on the top of a cake of <laughs> feces i don't know yeah anyway um yeah i and then then the i hate sand i mean there's not that much to say about it i hate sand i don't like it but i'm not gonna like try and romance someone with it i mean i guess it's understandable he doesn't know how but the idea was this was supposed to be romantic right, right? i think that was the aim and i'm like oh goodness it's just so bad and I think my third, my third will be from that movie. It's Padme dying of si- of sadness. Oh like, yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. Padme yeah. is probably the single. Dooku gets more development, but in terms of like a character who I think was criminally underdeveloped and underused in live action, and then gets completely rewritten, com- so much more added to her character in both the Clone Wars and in the books is Padme Amidala. Um, yeah. She's much better in the Clone Wars. I think she's much more chemistry with Anakin in those in those mm-hmm. uh, TV shows. But in the E.K. Johnson books about Padme, Queen's Shadow, Queen's Peril, Queen's Hope, I think the third one is – it, it just gives the character so much more depth. And so the idea that like – A, it makes no sense because Leia apparently remembers Padme. She remembers her birth mother. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's so bad. like – which I don't care if you use the Force. Like you saw her for three seconds. Um and yeah, it's just like the pet. Put aside the books, like the Padme Amidala you saw in the Clone Wars. Would that woman just give up on life because her love turned to the dark side? Right. Yeah. No. Not that. Yeah. Not. No. No way. No way. So. Yeah. yeah it, it's. Yeah. It's. 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 That's very bad. That to me has this kind of like misogynistic 
mm-hmm. like undercurrent, you know, that I think exists in, you know, the the prequel trilogy significantly more than in the original trilogy, which is interesting. Yeah. You know, because it was like 20 years later and it's like somehow like gone backwards because like Princess Leia in the original one. OK, there's you can have plenty of complaints. I don't remember a second female character besides Baru, who like there isn't m- barely did anything right um Th- besides are, getting fridged like there are three women characters in all of those first three star wars movies yeah like that's do, do you know who the really third bad. is mon mothma oh yeah 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 who you know but that's the thing like yes there there's a dearth of female characters right but it's mm-hmm. like okay you've got aunt Peru who's like kind of you know relegated to irrelevancy but like princess leia is like badass you know, and Mon Mothma is in charge of, like, the rebellion, you know? Like, that's that, those are bold choices in 1977 and 1983, you know? so Very much so, um, yeah. So at least, like, you know, that's better than, than Amidala in, in, you know, the third, uh, you know, the, in Revenge of the Sith, anyway. I yeah. think in the second movie, she actually had a little bit more agency in a few spots that was kind of nice. But yeah, like, I mean, like, her, her dragging uh, Anakin to go rescue Obi-Wan. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's a moment, you know. If it wasn't, for the, like, if it wasn't for the fact that she's supposed to fall in love with Anakin for no reason that I can possibly understand. Yeah. Uh, especially while Daddy Juan Kenobi is right there, as the internet will often <laughs> point out. Um, all right, so... I, Somehow, I think you got to do two questions in a row. I thought we were okay. We, yeah. We're coming to the end. No, I did three questions in a row. Oh, okay, I only asked one of. Them. Okay, so that's more. Yeah, yeah. Go. I somehow go, kept avoiding go. my. So, um, going in a different direction. Who are the three best actors in Star Wars? Oh. So to clarify, do you mean the three best actors? Or the three actors who do the best acting within the Star Wars? The three best acting performances within Star Wars. Okay, so I'm going to take this as meaning live action. Okay. Um, and if you want to list any voice actors, that's cool. I haven't really listened to the series in English, so I don't really oh, yeah, that's share true. the same voice <laughs> actors you do. You're like Sam Witwer. I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, you know, I'd have to look up whose voices I've been yeah. hearing because, you know, I've listened to Maul in Spanish and German and Cantonese, and, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, I'll take it in terms of live action. Um, jeez, I don't know. Um, that's hard. It's really hard. Um, I mean, I'll say first of all that I I think Mark Hamill's performance is dramatically underrated and mm-hmm. made um like sort of played like in a certain way, like it's not um like I think it's underappreciated, you know. Yeah, but. Um, I think his best acting is like as the Joker, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. um, and so I, you know, I, I don't think that I'd necessarily, you know, put him up in the, in the top three. Um, like it's hard with like Vader cause like James Earl Jones voice is amazing, but like it's, that's Vader's a composite, a composite, you know, mm-hmm. um, the way Maul is in the animated series. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I, I don't know if I'd go with James Earl Jones either, especially because, like, also, was it David Prowse or it was um, Sean, what's what's his name? It's an, a third person, right, who plays physical Anakin, who I think gives a great performance, but right. in this, like, little, he's in one scene, yeah. you know? Um, so, um, I think Christopher Lee... I'm going to throw up there because yeah. I think he doesn't have that much to work with. And he's in one of my least favorite Star Wars movies. But like when he's on screen, I can, I can watch, you know, yeah. like he, he just, he has just so much presence. Um, and, you know, maybe part of it's biased because like we just covered Dooku, you know? Right. Um, I, I, but uh, he he definitely would be one of my uh, on my honorable mentions list. I think yeah, he's, he's a, the fact that we care so much about this kind of nothing character. I think is a, a thousand percent because of Christopher Lee. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I mean, I think Harrison Ford like just like does the swashbuckler. Like he, I think he brings something to Han Solo that not a lot of actors would. You know, I, I, I mean, I yeah. think he's one of he's like a generational 
swashbuckling actor, mm-hmm. you know, who um, it's it's not like a ton of emotional depth. There is emotional depth there, but, um, you know, especially like when they're stuck in the asteroid belt, you know, that whole mm-hmm. thing. Uh, the fact that he improv the line, I know, you know. Yeah. Which, like, I mean, that her, he also improv the – he didn't improv, but he was the one who came up with – why don't I just shoot the the guy with the sword in Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Because, yeah. like, he was sick apparently that day. Yeah. And it was like, what if we don't do the sword duel that I don't want to duel and I just shoot him? They're like, oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. You know? Um, and, like, if you want that to be a writing credit instead of acting credit, I don't know. Um, you know, I mean, I think Carrie Fisher's fantastic in the mm-hmm. series. Um, I'm trying to think it – like, in more recent things – I mean, I think Tamora, Tamora Morrison is great in Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Um, and in in Mandalorian, like, I think it's it's hard. It's like like Pedro Pascal, like, he doesn't get to use his face, you know? And yet, like, to, you know, that's like, that's like doing the James Earl Jones job of, like, actually having your voice communicate so much. Yeah. But then also using body language, because that's, like, his body as well, you know? Yeah. So... Um, I mean, I could easily put, like, Vader through, like, the composite of um, all of the, the people mm-hmm. involved in Vader and, and like, Mando as, like, two of the top ones. Like, I don't know. It's it, – it's, that's a question that I feel like I'd really need to give some more thought to, to that's really – That's fair. That's fair. You know? Like, I think Diego Luna was fantastic in mm-hmm. Rogue One, but, like – I feel like a lot of people were fantastic in, in Rogue One. I don't I don't remember the actress's name who played. Yeah, Jane, uh, right? uh, I, I want to see Daisy Ridley, but she's Ray, who I think is yeah, also yeah, very Ray. good. But yeah, I, like I, I, I mean, I think one of the great things about Rogue One is it's a truly ensemble movie. So yeah, picking Absolutely, out yeah. any one of the individual actors is really hard. Yeah, um, and I think it just has like performances over across the board are one of the things. Um, that really carry that movie to like a higher level. Just the, all yeah. the performance. Felicity Jones. Is, That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. She plays Jin or so. Yeah. I, so you named all three other ones on my list. Um, okay. And I, I I would say it's kind of funny because there are a couple of people from the animated shows who are, who are, who are very close. Um, you've never heard D. Bradley Baker, who does the voices of all the clones. Oh, yeah. Is, and it, it's just amazing what he does with his voice. Um. It, but I realize, but like my number one though is a um, my number one and probably number uh, four are both voice actors. They're just from live action because yeah, I I had no problem putting James Earl Jones as just okay, yeah. the like like just amazing, and and the other honorable mention for me is Frank Oz as Yoda. Oh like, yeah, I was thinking about that too. But I, yeah, just the ability to convey that kind of playfulness and wisdom and like to call out Luke while te- it is just so good. Yeah. Uh, but the other two on my list are Carrie Fisher, who I think you said pretty much everything I'd say. The only thing I'd add is I think all of the big three from the original movies, I think all of their actors do a good job of conveying who they are now in the sequels. But to me, there's something about Princess Leia becoming General Organa mm. uh, that Carrie Fisher does that is just so powerful. Um, yeah. And I just love I, I just think her. So she's number two on my list. And then my third is Pedro Pascal for all okay. the reasons you yeah. said, like the ability that. I never miss – I never had a moment where I'm like, I wish I could see his face to know what he was thinking right now. And it's, right. It's, his body language, his voice, his – I mean, even that, like, he's so withdrawn. Like, he doesn't show much emotion. So the yeah. ability to, like, have that, it's just acting gold, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm with you on, uh-huh. on all of those. Um, yeah, in terms of the, the sequel trilogy, um, Carrie Fisher's performance is by far – um, my favorite out of, I mean, I, I, I like what they did with Leia, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and, um, and I think she gives a great performance and yeah. obviously it's tragic that, you know, she died when she did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I think would have made, unfortunately, that last movie so much better. Um, yeah. With her still in it. It would have to. Um, okay. So let me ask my last one. And, and this one might, it might be that's less of a challenge to me and more of a challenge. It, 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 I thought this would be a really hard one for you, but maybe it's only going to be hard for me. What are your three favorite things about Rise of Skywalker? Oh, yeah, no. Um, let's see. Um, I mean, number one has to be that you hate it so much. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I mean, like, <laughs> I, I love Last Jedi and you did not. And so I, I know you got some Schadenfreude when I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
this movie ruined Star Wars. And you're like, yeah, what's that feel like, friend? <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like, yeah, like the fact that she's Ray Palpatine, you know, until she decides to be Ray Skywalker, mm-hmm. like, felt very vindicating when I was like, look, you don't know. Like right. that Kylo Ren was either telling the truth or even knew what he was talking about, you know? Like, do I like that choice for her character? Not sure. Not yeah. really so much. Um, oh, let's see. I mean, three things that I liked the most about it. Um, I mean, okay, I I just thought it was overall like a fairly fun movie and like the end oh okay number one number one is when ray takes the one lightsaber and holds it up over her back and then ben reaches over his shoulder and draws that lightsaber out of thin air that is amazing that is an awesome moment it's if i loved the sequel trilogy that would be one of my top moments you know the fact that it resides in that movie undercuts it some right yeah. the fact that we have no connection to these knights of ren who he's now going against who are like his boys like that really makes that moment not as huge but that one simple maneuver that's awesome like that's yeah. i'm sorry that was just awesome yeah i'll give you that i i think i was gonna say earlier that the 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 ray and kylo ren fighting together after they kill snoke in last jedi was another one of my favorite. Lo- we're like, I feel like the rest of the context of what happens afterwards ruins it. But yeah, I did love. Yeah, the, yeah. Which hey, that's that that would be a cringeworthy moment for me about Last Jedi. But go on. Sure. Okay. Fair. fair. What are your other two? Um, I really like that. Uh, I'm gonna look up someone's name very briefly. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. She is who I thought she was. Um, I really like that. Finn finds another former stormtrooper, yeah. you know, um, who's portrayed by Naomi Aki, um, who is in the third season of Master of None, that if you still haven't watched, you still, I think, should watch it. Um, I mean, it's it's very different from, like, everything else that I enjoy, but I just thought mm-hmm. it was, ex- I thought her performance in that was exceptional. Um, but in this, like, I think her performance is fine, it's good, you know, but, like, the character sort of like that whole thing them showing up there and like finding these other people who left the storm you know um i like that as a concept that there are other people who defected you know yeah uh, from the first order um you know the fact that that's like they're like oh maybe maybe let's get you know put john boyega with like a black woman so that like the racist people aren't like oh no he's kissing a white woman you didn't like the white woman you didn't like the asian yeah i I was gonna say that's that that moment to me is very bittersweet because it's a brilliant plot point. Yeah, yeah. And I would love it if it wasn't being done to erase all the possible plot point lines. It's like he's not right. going to be a Jedi. He's not going to be with Rey. But but we'll give him a stormtrooper buddy. Like yeah, yeah. it's too bad because you're right. Outside of that context, it is a great moment. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I was gonna say my third one. This won't be my third one, but mm-hmm. I do think that it is overtly subtextual. <laughs> If you'll permit me that oxymoron, um, that Ray, that Finn is force sensitive and that that's what he wants to tell Ray. I think there is no other sensible interpretation. I think if you think anything else, you're out of your mind. And like, that's okay. I don't want to stigmatize like, you know, mental illness or being, but like, (laughs) I need to use the phrase here. Like, I think you're out your damn mind. (laughs) Cause like clearly, very, very clearly, that's what. He he is trying to tell her. Bittersweet. Why didn't he just tell her? Why didn't you make it textual? Why don't you just put it in the movie? But I do think that's obviously there. And I think that's better than it not being there at all. Yeah. Um, but that's not going to be my number three. My number three is going to be Ray healing uh, the, the giant creature that they are going to kill or is going to kill them or whatever. And she's like, wait, it's injured. Let me see if I can heal it. Oh, I can. Cool. It's like, should force healing have been a thing all the time? Probably. But I guess she's like super powerful. And like, at this point, I'm on board with that, you know? Right. Um, and I think, yeah, like, I like the idea of her helping one of these creatures instead of just like killing it. I yeah. thought that was nice. I, I think that was a great moment. I do also love that... Uh, the, the the Finn moment you brought up and the um, I'm gonna say something positive about it. What was the second the second the, the thing you were gonna not mention? 
Shin. Well, there were two Finn moments. There's right. there's Finn talking to um, the stormtrooper, what was Jana. That yeah, the former stormtrooper Jana, and uh-huh. then Finn trying to be like, "Oh yeah, by the oh, way, right. yeah, I want to be a Jedi too," because like I can kind of feel this Force thing, and like, mm-hmm. can we do this? Yeah. So just on the the Finn thing with with trying to tell her that the Force, yeah, that has now been confirmed in a couple of places, like the Lego Star right. Wars movies, which yes. are not canon, but like they've made it so clear, and including making some jokes where Obi Wan's like, "No, of course you're a Jedi. That's why." You can talk to me as a force ghost, yeah. Uh, and I believe also the the uh, someone involved in the movie has also confirmed that. And it's bittersweet for me though, again though, because I do think they are trying to create the they're they're trying for a lot of the movie to make you think he wants to profess his love to her. And I think oh. that by the end, I think you're right; it's pretty clear it's not that. But I think that they wanted to make that intentionally murky for a lot of the movie, which I really right. didn't like. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would agree with all those moments. And, and I'll say kind of like, you know, I've recently been able, like, for me, Re- Revenge of Skywalker, or Rise of Skywalker <laughs> and Attack of yeah. the Clones are like these polar opposites on the two different poles in which you can view the movies. Where I think like Attack of the Clones adds quite a lot to the overall Star Wars story. Yeah. But in terms of the actual movie making, it's god awful. Yeah. I think if I watch either Rise of Skywalker or Solo – as standalone space adventure movies, they're perfectly enjoyable. Yeah, I would agree yeah. with that. I think the the acting, the dialogue, there's there's no cringeworthy moments. To me, it just has nothing to do with Star Wars. Um, but but what I'd say about the um, and again, that's my opinion. I'm not for a moment saying anyone else is wrong. You get to enjoy it, and I've, I've hearing other people talk about why they love those movies has really helped me say like, cool, it's awesome you get to see that. The three things I'll say though that I liked about uh, Rise of Skywalker. Again, I love Rey, Rey as a character. I love the way she's developed. And I think the way they show her flirting with the dark side mm. in Rise of Skywalker and to some extent tapping into it. Like she uses yeah. she uses lightning, you know, yeah. like which is very considered to be dark side. And she uses it in a moment of anger. And like, yes, yeah, she's upset because she thinks she killed uh, killed Chewie. But uh, which is kind of funny to me because like she still did probably kill some rebel prisoners, just maybe not the one she cared about. Uh, but like... Like, to me, she... I, well, she I've, definitely killed some people. <laughs> yeah. We know that. I've often said on this podcast that I I think the Jedi rules were pretty dumb, uh, especially by the time of the prequels. And I really like the, like, good side Force users who are like, you know, maybe maybe pushing this at at or the ATST off the cliff so we don't get shot with mind control is an okay thing to do. And so, like, Kanan does that, Ezra does that. And yeah, I love Rey getting to experience that and then it makes it so much more powerful when she turns away from it um my second would be lando showing up with the big fleet like mm. and here again oh, it's like, yeah, yeah yeah that's the moment where if i don't think about it i love it because right. it is like yeah, yeah all Lando's alone like, i don't know that. what we're gonna do we we can't fight them and lando's saying there's more of us yeah it's it that came out after uh i'm pretty sure Endgame. that that came out after Endgame, right? It so, did, but it was certainly shot before Endgame came out. Okay, that that because yeah. it, it it is so similar to the on your left scene that it's either like they're brilliant for both doing it or it's a copy, which would be annoying. But yeah, so that that's a second moment. It's again bittersweet to me because I think it completely undercuts the point of Last Jedi, and also just doesn't make any sense that all these people would come and get there so quickly. And but fair enough. Um, and, and they that, have uh, they have the ghost in it. Yeah. The ghost ship, you know, from Oh, is it? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like in there somewhere. There's like a bunch of recognizable ships, apparently. Well, and I'll say that is my third favorite moment then. Um, Because, like, specifically because it is live action acknowledging the the animated shows. Mm. Is when, in that moment when uh, Rey thinks she is, like, done. And the voices of all these Jedi throughout time that we've met um, all speak to her. And it includes the voice, the the animated. Uh, oh, never mind that. It includes the voice of Ahsoka, um, mm-hmm. who has never appeared in live action. And to me, that was like one that that, and I guess yeah, the ghost goes together as like Star Wars acknowledging the animation in live action. You know, it's kind of like the first time we saw like the the uh, Marvel Netflix shows or, or like the Sh- Agents of Shield acknowledged in, on the big screen. The MCU is a big deal. To me, this felt very similar. 
Um, I, I don't even know that that's a thing that happened. So, okay. Yeah. So the agents of shield stuff has crossed over. Um, but the, and then last I'll say as, as honorable mention, um, Hux being the Scott, the spy and being very quickly like found out and shot because I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, again, the bureaucracy stuff, like, yeah, he's just going to protect his own skin. He doesn't care who wins. But I did have a moment of like, if you give me an Admiral Hux, a General Hux redemption story, I'm out. I'm I'm right, walking. Right, right. And so for him to have like, yeah, you're the spy. You're helping us. Nope, you're dead. Um, that was just like, okay, that that's good writing there. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not with you so much on the like, oh, good, you're dead. But like, I liked that it was that he was just like. He was just messing with Kylo Ren. He's like, I'm sick of this man boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he, this, like, he's like, he's like, I'm, I'm just sick of, you know, this guy. So, like, screw him. Like, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna give this information away just to mess with him. Cause, yeah. like, I just don't like him. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so I have a couple other questions I'm gonna ask. My thought is we've been talking about wanting to have a stinger, uh, at the end of episodes. I think what I'm gonna start doing, we can switch off, only do one question at a time. Is at the end of our Star Wars episodes during Andor, let's ask one of these questions back and forth. Because I think it's yeah, a sure, fun thing to do. Good. It's a fun way to kind of oh. think about some. <laughs> It'll be a nice 20 minute stinger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, we got through six questions <laughs> in under an hour and a half. So I'm incredibly impressed by that. Okay, 15 um, minute stinger. <laughs> you know, Wait, well, you asked three questions? I feel like you only asked two. No, I asked um, favorite, villains, favorite villains, best actors, and three oh, good things yeah. about Rise of Skywalker. That's right. Okay, fair, fair, fair. Um, I I feel like I want to tell you what my other ones were, but should I not? Uh, yeah, no, let's hold it. I think it'll be fun to kind of keep going as we uh, go through the... Okay, okay. The fair, fair, fair. I, unless, unless you want to... Um, have though unless you don't want to surprise and, and have us always know the know and so get a chance to prepare in advance. Oh, I think if we want it to be a stinger, we should know in advance. <laughs> well, one of us should know, but should both. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Go this ahead and tell me. Saying. Tell me the questions you didn't ask, and I'll tell you the questions I didn't ask. Okay, I was gonna. I was gonna ask like favorite three Jedi. Okay, I favorite I'm, three think, scoundrels. Okay. Favorite three droids. Ooh, these are good ones. Right, and then. Um, Favorite lines? Oh, that was it. Yeah. Okay. The other ones I was going to ask is um, three favorite episodes or arcs of Star Wars TV. Like oh, you divided it yeah. live action and oh. um, uh, animated. Yeah. I, I decided not to ask it tonight because it's so similar. Yeah. But I was basically going to do like, okay, three favorite moments from the TV shows versus the Okay, movies. sure. Um, yeah, yeah. So that would be a fun one to discuss. Uh, then my next one was going to be kind of similar to your, your three favorite like scoundrels, your three favorite neutral characters. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, and then yeah, I was gonna ask your three favorite movies, which I think is you like. Okay, so if if we do that half right. So hold on a second. That's gonna be our yeah. stinger. Thank you so much all for listening. Uh, we we're gonna answer one last question after the ads. But uh, you're a great audience. Thank you so much for being a part of this. The Ethical Jedi is where we can find all the podcasts I do. Is that's, where you can find all the ways. That's not it. The Ethical oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have been, with the exception of a one-hour break uh, for lunch, I have now been podcasting for the last last four and a half hours. So, yeah, that's a um, lot. That's really a I, lot. I'm in a while. So anyway, The Ethical Panda, you'll find all the podcasts I do, a lot of which Paul is on. You'll find all the ways to contact us. I want to hear your answers to these lists. I'm probably actually going to put them out on Twitter as well, on the, Star War, on the, uh, the Ethical Panda Twitter account. So sign up for that. Uh, mostly though, folks, start getting hyped for Andor. We definitely are. We're going to be doing episode by episode coverage. Uh, we've been uh, live streaming some of our recordings on uh, Paul's Twitch stream. We're going to act like this is my wanting to like officially announce it. Uh, we're going to be doing it pretty much every Wednesday night at um, 7.30 p.m. Central Time, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 p.m. Um, Mountain, look, I'm acknowledging you, though I still think you should kick rocks because you've got rocks, and uh, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and that'll be on Paul's Twitch stream, which is just twitch.tv slash zenmadman. And the last thing I want to mention is because I just don't have enough ways to talk to you all, I have started a Discord channel. It's just called uh, Discord server. It's just called The Ethical Panda. Uh, but it's a great way to come hang out with other people, have more of these discussions, get to know us, and also talk about random stuff. 
And there will be a link to that, right? An invite to that yep. in the in the Discord in the show notes. Because I yeah. think I think you can't just like find a Discord channel, right? You need an invite somewhere. I, I know you actually can, and then ask for uh, an invite. But if you make it like oh, publicly yeah, okay. findable, but yeah, we'll definitely um cool uh, with some moderation because I do want to make sure we don't get like you know. But I, I I think if you're here to troll, like you would have lost this this podcast a long time ago. So, <laughs> uh, all right, Paul. Any last words from you about what you're up to these days? Um, I'm Zen Madman. I spend a lot of hours doing a lot of things and I have a headache right now. I'll talk about it some other time. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but you yeah. can find me on Twitter and Twitch as Zen Madman and YouTube. And mm-hmm. yeah. All right. So thank you so much, folks. This is a false goodbye. There's an after coming. Thank you so much for being a great audience. And as fans, be good to each other. All right. So. The original trilogy is number one. What are number two and three of your favorite Star Trek, <laughs> Star Wars movies? Uh, number two is definitely Rogue One. And I think number three is Solo. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> like, I wanted to say that to troll you. Uh huh. But then I realized it might be true. It's probably The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens is probably like my fifth favorite Star Wars movie. Interesting. Um, that, that's what I think it often gets talked down about. Like, I think people don't recognize just how good it is. Um, it's like, a very well-made movie that when it came out was what I think a lot of people needed to see in terms yeah. of like, oh, a Star Wars movie that's well-made, doesn't have terrible dialogue. You know, it's like, it's technically well-made. You know, the performances are really good. I enjoy all the characters taken yeah. on their own. I don't like a few of the developments. But uh, overall, I think it is a mostly good movie. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think a lot of the complaints about it, I understand, but I don't think that nullifies, you mm-hmm. know, what's good about it. I, I think yeah. it just, you know, yeah, you you could have had a few lines that explain maybe why Ray is able to fly a, a like a Millennium Falcon type thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you didn't. Okay. You know, like there's a lot of power creep, but that's just kind of what happens with these things. Yeah. Like, you know what? I think they've got... A few new characters who have who are have very good portrayals, you know, yeah. and they have really good chemistry with one another. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the things. That's the biggest thing to me that really makes that movie work is the chemistry yeah. um, between them all. Like, when we we're talking about best actor, I was like, okay, well maybe I should put you know uh, Oscar Isaac or no, but maybe I should put John Boyega. Like it's all of yeah, them. Yeah. And, and frankly, honestly, who I probably should have had. I don't like a lot of the things they do with his character. But uh, Adam Driver is just phenomenal as Kylo Ren. Like, especially once you realize yeah. what they're doing with him. Like, I think he's just he, very a very good actor. He definitely gives a very good performance, for sure. Yeah. Um, and, like, Solo, I'll say, though, like, there are parts of it that I really like. And I mm-hmm. think as, like, if you're not thinking about it as a Star Wars movie, I think yeah. it's good, you know. And, I mean, not, like, the best movie, but just, like, you know, at least fine. And, um, yeah, it's just there's... Oh, it's got the 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 droids rights droid in it, right? Yeah, that's a fun part. Like, I really like that. Although then she gets non consensually put into the Millennium okay. Falcon for the rest of existence. So like, I don't know. That's like sweet but questionable. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like it's like hmm. I don't know. Okay, hmm. Whereas like you could have you could have had her ask for that as like her dying moment, you know? Right. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you did that, it would have been a better movie. But yeah. yeah. No. I mean, I I just definitely rank that above the prequel trilogy or the last two. You know. I mean. I, yeah. Yeah. I um, I think that I think that's very fair. I think like so, I love a heist movie, and Solo is a heist. Movie. Right. And I, yeah, yeah, exactly. It just so much of it doesn't fit with my understanding of how things in the Star Wars universe work, and right, right. and the and like. You know, so I, I, I definitely – I can't put that one up there. But I think I also yeah. agree. Phantom Menace to me uh, – not Phantom Menace. Um, the, Force the Force Awakens. Awakens. Yeah. It, I think it was exactly the movie we needed. I think I'd rank it a little lower because I feel like it doesn't really have – for me, it doesn't have very good rewatch value. Um, it just – like I feel like it was the movie mm. I needed then. Now okay. it's a little bit too much A New Hope all over again. Right. Uh, I, I, I disagree about the the power stuff with Rey. I, I, I do think Rey's – I think Ray knowing what she knows and Luke and Anakin knowing what they know all are a piece. But I know we disagree on yeah. that. So yeah, that's, I think that's they're fine. like super different and there's a big conversation there. But they are yeah. similar. I, yeah. I will definitely grant that. And, and I will say you are one of the only people on this planet who I'll have that conversation with. Because right, like, right, and right. this is a larger topic. But I think – and I think you'd acknowledge this as well. But maybe not as much as I think it is. Like an awful – 
a lot of the people who have that critique, I think it's motivated in large part because on, on some subconscious levels, they're a lot more willing to accept that from a male character than from a female, or they're just much more likely, much more critical of a woman character. I know you well enough to know that I don't. I know that's not where you're going with this, and we yeah. have that conversation. We will. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm upset on her behalf that she doesn't get to have as much of an arc as I feel like she deserves as a character. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a fair way to put it, and, and I that part I definitely agree with. Like, I think she is a great character, and I want her to get more and not kiss the genocidal <laughs> man boy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um. But that, you know, that's fine. Uh, for me, the top three movies are, uh, I put A New Hope specifically, which, okay. I, and I will say, this is 100% nostalgia value. It's 100%. Sure. That's the movie that made me love all of this. It's just, it'll always be my favorite. Um, uh, Rogue One, I agree with you, is also just amazing. I'm so excited for Andor. And I thought about not putting this on because you might think I was trolling you, but it honestly is just one of my oh, yeah. favorites, The Last Jedi. It yeah. is just it, it is we don't we disagree on it and that's totally fine, uh, and 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 I'm glad I'm glad that we've now in terms of the inter- again like I think your reasons for disliking it are are very valid and very different from an awful lot of the hate it gets, and um there, there, there's some discussions we had there about why people have, you know the way people uh, think of people who dislike things and stuff like that but to me it's just it, it hits so much what I want out of Star Wars so yeah and like honestly that makes the movie itself bother me a lot less than it would Mm -hmm. you know like the fact that i know that it's this very meaningful movie for for you know people i care about like that what better thing can a movie do than like hold meaning to to people you know right um in 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 important ways and so i'm i'm happy that it does that um i do want to actually can i just comment on that yeah i I really appreciate that and i i want to say i would feel the same but I'm so glad you don't truly love and find Rise of Skywalker the oh, yeah. movie experience because I yeah, yeah, don't yeah. know if I could do this. I don't know if I could be a bigger person as you are. Um, anyway, this is supposed to be a stinger, but as you said, the stinger is going to last forever. So give your last thing, and then we're, I promise we'll let you go go back to your next podcast. Yeah, I mean, I was watching a movie, and somebody I was with did say, "I don't know if I can be friends with people who like this movie." <laughs> Because sometimes, like, you know, if, like, somebody's like, oh, yeah, I read Mein Kampf and I think it's pretty good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there are things a person could like and you could be like, I find that a little sus. Yeah. That seems pretty sus. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, what I, like, I kind of want to have a long conversation at some point about. Due to the magic of two people who just are absolutely, totally, 100% in love with the sounds of their own two voices. Paul's request to discuss that, at some point, became a discussion for the next 50 minutes. And we decided that instead of giving you a 50-minute stinger, we would instead just take that and turn it into the superhero ethics episode about discussing fandoms where there's toxicity and, and hard opinions, but legitimate opinions as well. We would just take that entire discussion and turn it into a superhero ethics episode. So... Enjoy. I hope you enjoyed our stinger. Please know that the stinger went much longer, and it will be a superhero ec- episode, superhero ethics episode coming out soon. Meanwhile, thank you all so much for listening to this, and as fans, be good to each other.